Welcome back to another episode of the LKT Sports Talk. Myself, Ben, here. How are you doing, Alex? Oh, buddy, I am doing so good. So yes. good. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, the Leafs. But not non-biased, of course, but I mean, at the end of the day, it is the one of the two big talks right now in the hockey world. We'll get to the second one, but because we're so happy... 19 years, was it? Bro, my inner child coming out. Yes! <laughs> we did it. It's finally done. Oh, that man. was just awesome, but we'll get to it. So what we're going to do, as the start of every episode, we're going to go through a, a Lockery Token ecosystem feature. So today, we're going to go through our NFT marketplace. This is the NFT marketplace that's built into our app. We are currently coming out with a, a desktop marketplace that will be in the next week or two quite soon. So keep your eyes out for that. But this is our NFT marketplace on our site. We have a plethora of different options in the around sports. You know, we have the best part about it, which I really like, and I find it really cool if you're a big sports fan. This is Rogla BK. They are a team in the SHL. They won the Champions Hockey League in 2022. They are an excellent team. For those that don't really know the team, Moritz Sider, uh, Timothy Lilligren, they all came, uh, uh, Marco Casper, they all played there. Marco Casper just played there last year. This is actually him right here. It's all minted by the team, which is awesome. They make it themselves and they put it on the app for people to buy. Fans, it's it's awesome. We have videos, uh, photos, you name it, it's on here. It is awesome for sports fans, especially when you know you get to ones that are actually minted by the players, right? This is minted by Justin Azevedo. He's a former LA King draft pick. He plays in uh, Germany right now for the ZSU Lions. Shout out Justin. He's an awesome dude. He's a Locked Oak ambassador. He'll maybe be on the show one day. We'll see how it goes. But awesome dude. So we have everything. Fan, you know, people, uh, community members make their NFTs as well. There is a million and one things on here. It is awesome. Check it out. Links in bio. All right. Let's get to it. <laughs> Series are done. Not yet. As of right now, the time of this recording on uh, May 1st at uh, 9.50 Eastern Time, Devils are up to nothing. That's another kind of surprise in the series, but maybe by the time we're done getting to it, we'll know the winner. But <laughs> let's start with the Vegas and Seattle series, Vegas and um, Jet series. We kind of saw that one coming, I would say. It, it, it came down to. Winnipeg not having the firepower because they were hurt, right? Three of their best players were hurt, and that was that was enough to kind of kill them, right? And not to mention, obviously, Vegas is, in my opinion, the team to beat in the West right now, maybe with Edmonton, but they're certainly up there. They're an excellent team, and they kind of took care of Winnipeg in short order. Right? It was the shortest series. It was in five, which was I'm surprised. Um, I would have to look it up. I can't remember off the top of my head, but maybe, Alex, you know, when was the last time a first round didn't have a, a sweep in it? Probably a good amount of time. So, Alex, what do you think of this series? And also, do you know if there was a sweep in any other rounds? <laughs> no, I, I have no clue, man. When the last time there was not a single sweep in round one. Um, I do think, though, as we, like, hockey, man, it's such a, a sport of, of parody. You know, it is such a sport of bounces, it seems like you can have a great team. And, you know, as we've seen in these playoffs, somehow you don't end up winning, at, you know, the four out of seven. Um, now, with Winnipeg, definitely, man, health played a huge impact on it. Um, it's it's kind of disappointing because I think if they were both a fully healthy team, you know, ifs and buts, but if they were both fully healthy, it would have been a pretty close series. I still think it would have been favored for Vegas and I would have been comfortable taking them. But at full strength, it would have been close, and it's it just would have been nice to see that hockey. What do we see Winnipeg do next year? Um, you know, I think I think we could see a lot of changes coming there because I think I think they were a good team because they have a lot of good pieces, but they it, it didn't quite feel right all year, and and that's in a year where they had maybe a Norris you know caliber defenseman in Josh Nor Morrissey. <laughs> well, yeah, Josh Norrissey. Let's go with that actually, possibly. <laughs> Josh Norrissey here. He he might be a finalist here and when it gets released, probably in the next week or so. Um, 
and you know it's it's just a bit disappointing to see them go out in five here now that's what i thought it was going to be that's sort of what i called we'll chalk that up one point for me there but yeah, um yeah. <laughs> you know you call vegas one of the teams to beat in the west absolutely man they're they look like they're they're firing on all cylinders right they've got a, a super solid defense core and, and jack eichel man i'm i'm kind of like what i'm seeing from him in, in mm -hmm. year one of playoff hockey for jack now he's got to get to now he's like he's in round two already you yep. know that's it's gonna be a pretty exciting series to see yep so as as you can tell alex mentioned a little bit you can see there's a couple uh, looking like christmas over here um that's just not because we're festive i mean we are festive because it's nhl playoffs but i mean we're getting we're gonna do a little scoreboard here um we'll see who's the winner uh, or not um, <laughs> spoiler at the end of it <laughs> but yeah i know it's i'm i gotta say though like when it comes to winnipeg i don't think they should tear it down or anything right like i really don't like you can blame their injuries you can blame vegas for being such a great team but i mean like I, they're there right like and they have a good mix of vets and you know prime players and you know guys like Cooper fetty Right, like they're they're good. They're a good team all around. I genuinely think that they're they're still there. Right, I wouldn't say tear it down. I would just say maybe a little slight retool to the point where you can even just retry it. Right, you have excellent goaltending. You have you know a, a, a solid forward group. Maybe add another couple pieces in the decor. But I mean, still like, even that decor is still quite good. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say call it quits for them. I would say just you know. Give it another goal, maybe grab another piece or two, and give it another shot, man. They're still a good team, right? When you have a when you have a guy like you know Hellebuck in your net, you have confidence. But Vegas was just, I guess, you know, too much to handle. They're a very very good team, and we'll see if they run all the way to the Western Final. So, uh, so uh, so yeah, Dallas and Minnesota. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. I, I mean, again, I thought it would have been a little bit quicker. I had four. Alex had five, so chalk one up for Alex. Um, you know, close, close enough. It's okay though. But I mean, yeah, like, like I, like I said before, like Minnesota just they, 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 for me, they weren't there. But I mean, the fact that they knocked off two games and it was still relatively close, pretty impressive. I, I, I thought that they were good. I, I think Dallas will have a, a fun time in the next round against seattle i believe so that'll be a fun one it's gonna be very 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 fast-paced hockey i'm gonna love that so i'm excited to see uh talex say again shout out lock token ambassador on uh you know on to the next round and into a very fun series so alex what do you think yeah we saw we saw a dallas team that was just better they were a step ahead of minnesota almost the entire time i i agree i was pretty impressed that minnesota was able to pull off the two wins um the goaltending just didn't quite hold up throughout the other the other games and um i mean like i said i think dallas was just that sort of more complete team and to me man maybe i'm not giving seattle enough credit still i mean they've only been kind of doing it all year and just tuck out the defending champs to keep doing it but i i really like dallas's path here um so i'm i'm a little nervous for that team that team kind of looks like a wagon to me that kind of they kind of have every single thing you want, right? That elite scoring with Jason Robertson, Tyler Sagan, you know, Jamie Ben found his touch again this year. They got, you know, the Mason Marchman types and the defensemen are pretty high end too with, uh, you know, what the heck is his name? Third overall pick, Miro Heiskanen. Thank you, Alex. Man, yeah, I'm yeah. Down for a second, but Miro Heiskanen, <laughs> Essa Lindell, that, that, that group right there, it's, it's tough. And an Ottinger, man, he's, he's looking really good. So, I'm a little worried about this Dallas team, but how far they might be going. They might be a serious problem here for the West. Yeah, they're Miro Heiskanen is an absolute stud. Right. Like I, I think somewhere down he because he maybe he doesn't necessarily make those, you know, drop dead gorgeous plays, even though he really does. I think it's just like, you know, a lot of the the Dallas market where it is still big for hockey. People, the fans there are crazy, right? But more of the you know expansive or you know the extensive market of other people right like a, the casual fan from toronto doesn't know who's on dallas right or anywhere else right that's kind of the problem dallas is you know the cowboys and you know they're every other sport but hockey kind of except for the people that are there right like on the global scale of it people don't know who jason robertson is right which is 
crazy to me because he's so good. But I mean, you know, like they're an excellent team. They truly are a wagon as well. And I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are jumping on that bandwagon without a question you have to call it a bandwagon in a negative way because it's a bandwagon in a great way. They're such a fun team to watch. So I mean, they, they could go very, very far. I, I'm, I'm stoked to see what's going to happen, but I mean, we'll get to our uh, next round predictions because maybe you will see what's going on, but um, you know, Edmonton and uh, LA. So, uh, Chalk one for Ben. Chalk, uh, you know, how's it going? Thanks. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I mean, I was watching that uh, that game six, and McDavid was ready to play, right? McDavid and Drysaddle were lasered in. They were they were like this is the time. No messing around, boys. We want a cup, and that's what they did. It, this whole series was not dominating by any means. Right when McDavid and Drysaddle turn it on, I'd say McDavid and Drysaddle, but I mean realistically, that is the the superstar factors of the team. You know, Nuge obviously had a great year. Vander Kane's a, a big help, but I mean it, it. It comes down to them. They are the team. They drive that team. What makes them so great? When they want to win, buddy, it's time to win. Right? Those guys can go out there with shoes on and play just as well. Like it's 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 crazy. Like to have that talent, you, you wouldn't be surprised to see them win. Nowhere, anywhere, am I taking away from how LA played this series. I, I always liked LA. I respect that team so much right now. The fact that they even made it to this point against against a bloodthirsty McDavid and Drysaddle. Right, the fact that they could have done that and held together like so tight defensively, that is incredible to me. And I, I I love this series. Now, yes, I did take Edmonton in seven, but it's seven because I knew LA would have been there. Right now, okay, they only did it in six, but they damn well could have made it to seven. They damn well could have won. Right, the way they played, they they grew on me a lot. I'm very excited to see what they'll do in the next year or two to kind of expand on this team. So I am stoked. I am, I'm in love with LA now. I'm, I've grown crazy respect for him. Alex, what do you think? I know you had uh, LA to win, but you gotta, you gotta see uh, what's going on now. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I honestly, I guess I wasn't giving the Edmonton defense and goaltending kind of the, uh, the credit it, it earned itself there at that series. I'll say, um, obviously, Ekholm was a huge pickup. They paid a massive amount to get him, and I mean, paying dividends, right? He looks great. He really helps shore up that uh, decor. And it's not even necessarily about acquiring that number one guy for picking up, you know, a number one guy. It's it's about how it slots everybody in their ice time and their their ice time allocation against you know their opponents better, right? It it just helps everybody fit in better. This is the issue. Everything's about the Leafs because that's what I know the most about. But this is the issue the Leafs had for years with Kessel and Fanuff as their top line guys. They needed guys ahead of them because these are good players, but they can't be the best guys in your team, right? No. So you bring Echo into that decor, and he doesn't have to be the best guy, right? Darnell Nurse might still be the best defenseman there. I think he's maybe I think he's better just because I like the mobility of a defenseman a bit more. And but for his in terms size too, and the fact that he's that big and he can move that well and move the puck that well. Yep. Yeah, that's big. And so you bring in the Ekholm type that is now able to play that shutdown role that allows Nurse to maybe get, you know, a little bit more free and playing a little bit more open, gets an Evan Bouchard, maybe not playing in many defensive situations, and he's really more used in these offensive situations. And the kid looks good, man. You know, that power play, was it nearly 50%? Was it 50% around one? Something ridiculous like Close that. Close to it, yeah. It right? was because wild. You've got those elite shooting talents. McDavid can find anybody anywhere. Dry settle seems to have a score from anywhere. Bouchard's yeah. clapping a couple and also snapping it around out there, right? It's 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 pretty cool. It's it definitely is exciting to watch. Obviously, when those guys step on the ice, it feels like they can score it literally every single shift. Now I would like to see a bit more like Clint Coston, you know what? Big series from him. Big couple crucial games to close it out too. He had a big game, uh, game six it was. They finished it off and he had a big game six. And as long as they can keep a little bit of that depth scoring, I think, I think, man, they, they're kind of cooking here, right? The only thing that I'm nervous about is the goaltending. We saw it stumble a little bit with Skinner. 
Campbell came in, looked great, but nobody's really feeling comfortable about throwing Campbell back in there to start. That's, I mean, that's why they didn't. Yeah. They went back to Skinner. So it feels like it's, it's you know, a little bit of a tight wire act, but they, it is somebody that's really good at balancing, right? Like you kind of have some faith in it, but I could also see it being a, a crash and burn situation and, and they're going to be playing Vegas. You know, this is going to be a pretty intense oh, matchup. Dude. We get, we get Jack Eichel versus Connor McDavid. You know, that's something that was a prime in everybody's lives eight years ago at the, the draft. And as they were coming up and, and it was the, it was the eight you know, years ago, eight oh years ago, dude. God. And here we are, they're going to be playing round two to chance to go to the Western finals. You know, mm -hmm. it's, I have no clue who's going to win that series. I, I really don't. Yeah. That one, like for, for me, those are the two powerhouses in the West. Um, we'll get to what, what, what we, what we think is going to happen. It's a, but going to be a very very tight one now seattle oh <laughs> um yeah that's a good team dude that's a good team chalk one over ben how's it going chalk one over me called it on seven two how you doing but uh, you know like i'm not surprised i, I i'm really not like and I, I, i've said this before and i'll say it again it's not because of colorado it's because of seattle I think people sleep on Seattle way too much, right? To the point where I don't know who's going to win the next series, right? I, I You would think that Dallas is a lock, right? But, I mean, these are two very similar teams, right? Now, Seattle does – or sorry, uh, Dallas does have the – the firepower more. You know, they have the the Sagans, the Robertsons, you know, the, the Hints, you know, like – Seattle has like depth, you know what I mean? Like they have everybody doing their job well, right? Like there is no superstar players on on Seattle, but they're all high level good players, right? And that's why I love that team because they play together, right? It reminds me of Vegas in their first year, right? They're playing as a cohesive unit. Right, they're they're it's it's great, and you know to have some you know, someone like Sprong, who's an excellent player, on the fourth line on your team, on most nights, that's pretty damn good, right? Like I, I, I'm not surprised at all that they won. Now you can factor with Colorado getting the injuries and McCarr McCar missing that game. I don't remember if they won that game or not, but uh, you know, like for Seattle to take it in seven, that is huge for them against the defending Cup champions. No matter how different they look this year compared to last year, I think that they're gonna f really feel that, and potentially go on a nice little push to the Western Final. So I don't know. I'm I'm interested very heavily to see what they're gonna do because this is another team like LA where I'm starting to fall in love with these guys, right? Like the the story behind it, right? Now obviously LA didn't win and they did, but I mean like they're looked at in my opinion at least, as the incredible underdog in this playoff, right, or on both sides of, of the of the conferences. So, love cheering for an underdog. Alex, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I sort of touched on it last last comment there. I, I still feel like I'm part of that group that's that's not quite feeling it yet. Like, I just, I'm not totally buying it, right? Like, every, they, they keep winning. I'm like, really? Okay. Good job. Like, way to go. But it... Again, maybe it's because there's not really that super high end sort of name talent on the team. Like you say, it is it. It is a really deep team. They've got, you know, solid one through four lines, like you say, with scoring throughout. Now, do they have Jared McCann back for this round? We haven't seen any word. I just had a quick Google there. I didn't I didn't see any updates besides when he was listed not available for game seven. They went out and they won that game without him. So obviously they can win without him. They won the the most important one of that first round. But I definitely don't feel great about that team without him for a whole round against Dallas with a pretty solid goaltender back there, one of the top five in the league for me. And and you're going to have to make good on those goals you do get, right? I don't see this being... Sorry. If this series ends up going well for Seattle, I don't see it being a high-scoring series. I don't think they're staying in the game if it's five to four games. Like, they're going to need a more three to two style, and, and that's going to really come down to their defense. And uh, their goal to see if it can hold up. Yeah, I think that's what it would be too. It would be tight. Beating Jay Gottinger is going to be hard. Let's be honest. 
Jake Ottinger. Whoever Seattle wants to put in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Philip Grubauer is look. He's looked pretty good. He has. He has. Nobody feels more confident with Grubauer over Ottinger. So goaltending exactly. matchup goes to Dallas right now. Exactly. What is Seattle bringing out that beats them? Right, and if you again you look at the high end talents, Dallas beats them both on defense and offense. Mm-hmm. But do they beat them as thoroughly built and as maybe magical dream run scenario? <laughs> I don't know. Seattle kind of has a little magic right now. That's where I think the difference is going to be too. That depth is so important as well. You know, Dallas does have good depth for sure, but I mean, Seattle's depth is nice, man. I, 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 I like them. I don't know who to pick. I really don't. But we'll jump over to uh, Carolina and the Islanders. Well, Carolina won. <laughs> they took it in six. Uh, again, I have no problem with it. I do love Colorado or Carolina. You know, I just. I just really wanted Bo to win, you know. Shout out Bo Horvat, you know. How's it going? You know, again, one of my one of my guys. But and Carolina was a better team. Let's be honest, right? Like they they they're still so good. the The fact that I even doubted them because of their injuries, I I think about it and I'm like, wow, that was stupid. I I can't believe I did that. They're still such a deep team, even though Shurastinkov's out. You know, they got guys like Nikas. They got guys like like um um Jarvis. To ever, there's so many guys that can step up still. Right, like I don't know why I ever thought that they were going to still do it. Uh, maybe it was just my my hope and dream of you know uh, of uh, you know uh, Bo and the guys to get going. But I mean, it is what it is. You know, that was still a very fun series to watch. So fast, still. La, or, uh, LA geez. Um, uh, Islanders still played a great series. Colorado played a great series. It was awesome to watch. Alex, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, what I thought the Islanders were going to be able to bring more so was that just playoff hockey that lock it down and and carolina was really able to break through and and get you know get their offense moving we both were kind of doubting the total offensive power of carolina and man they lost table in that series too and they still took it out in six right like (laughs) still i'm i'm really not feeling super great about them in their next matchup i just whichever team it's going to be i i feel is going to be kind of like the dallas seattle situation where they kind of just match up better now Carolina still has some obviously some some real nice offense. They still like you say Martin Ekash, awesome player. Uh, Sebastian Ajo, yeah, we've heard of him. He's pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, you know Dougie, um, not Dougie Hamilton, Brent Burns on D. There, he's I think he's got four goals or something, three goals in the first round or something ridiculous. He's been you know, he's been dancing around out there, and they got cap retention on him. Like that's looking like a solid pickup, man. It's, <laughs> he's still got the wheels on him. It's oh for sure. They've got it's pieces. Weird. It's all weird, man. It's all in his beard. Just helps him go, you know. He's... Oh, the playoff morale that it brings on the loan, right? That brings like an extra sure. five five points to the dressing room. And and we saw Freddie come back for uh, the game six, the clinching game there. Yes. That was good to see because I just I, I do feel more confident with Freddie over Renta. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both serviceable though, so I mean, really, it's 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 maybe just a weighted coin flip there, but I don't know. It's going to be tough for them the next round if this scoring that they do have doesn't show up because as you've lost Tavo in the first round and as you lost Svechnikov about a month before the playoffs and as you never had Pacioretty all year, that's a damn good line right there for any team, right? That'd be give or take second line, arguably first line on almost, you know, any team in the NHL. So to be missing that in its entirety, that's, it's going to be really tough. Yeah. That's they'll, they'll have another one regardless of who wins between the Rangers and the Devils. What do we got here? Devils are up 2 nothing with 14 minutes left in the third. Looking like it's going to be the Devils. So we'll call it right now, provided the miracle. Maybe not a miracle, but provided the comeback, that it's Devils and, and Carolina. I was getting, ben, Ben, come on, man. The, you put the 2023 playoff curse on it. It's going to be Rangers for sure now. Oh, We've, my God, imagine. The, the team's coming back in the third period. Have I you know, seen that this actually, playoffs? You know what? Uh, you know what? Good point. I have. <laughs> Good point. We'll keep it general still. Regardless of who wins that series, it is going to be awesome to watch. Sebastian done done. He's not coming back at all. Right? So like, that's Regardless, you're not getting that piece back. I don't recall them saying anything about Pacioretty. I think he's done done as well. Right? So that this is their team. They're still so fast. Who play either of those teams? It's gonna be like the two fastest people in the world having a race. 
It's going to be awesome to watch. I cannot wait for whatever the matchup is. It's going to be awesome. Cannot wait. Let's move to the guys. We're talking Toronto. We're not by a show here. But like I said in the intro, I didn't even wait. Didn't even wait until we got to the point. We talked about it right away. It is one of the two things that the entire hockey world is talking about right now. The fact that the Leafs pulled it off and won in six for there since 19 years ago. 2004. Always a baby. <laughs> like, you know, like people weren't even alive. Like, <laughs> like there's like 19 year olds that were like weren't even alive. Man, can you imagine? There's people that are legal that just now that weren't even alive. It's mm-hmm. it's insane. Like, I was watching the game, you know, and, and I get very like the last episode, my heart can't take it. You know, it, it can't, right? So I was probably gonna have a full on heart attack watching that OT. Right, because this was my mindset. We talked about it in the first episode. If the lease went to seven, bet the house on Tampa. Right, <laughs> right. You said it, Alex. You know, like they they were not going to win that game seven. I genuinely do not believe they would have won in seven. I think they would have somehow found a way to blow it again in seven, and Toronto fans would have been jumping off a bridge. Because this would have been the last straw. <laughs> but I mean, like, they did it. <laughs> they actually did it. I, I, that goal went in and I was in disbelief. I'm sitting there watching with my buddies. Everyone's cheering, yelling. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, silent, <laughs> just quiet. Like, they did it. <laughs> they did it. Like it's like, wait a minute. No, it hasn't sunk in. No, no, no. They're gonna call it back. Something's gonna happen. They they did it. And I'm like, then it started hitting me. I'm like, it doesn't feel real. Like it's like it's still doesn't really feel real. Right. And it's like they they did it, right? But they did. Alex, they did it. What do you think? Man, it is absolutely unbelievable. It feels right. It it just we knew the playoff matchup all year. It was gonna be Tampa. Then, you know, the way they come out game one, it's like, okay, um, I'm not sure what to expect for the rest of this series. That was quite quite the beating they took, right? And then they clap back in game two. And it's, it kind of felt to me, I was really feeling the game five. It was kind of all lining up to at least come home and they just take it out, right? The way they won game three and four. And yeah, man, when they didn't, those nerves were coming back in for me too. Like they were for everybody, right? You could tell by some of the tweets out there. We saw, we saw people, there's so many fans. You're going to get the crazies of all types, right? And people will get passionate. People are expressing themselves. And yeah, I mean, it was a nervous watch for game six, but it was still optimistic. Um, I definitely, I definitely <laughs> would have been just a pit of nerves or a ball of nerves all day today if we were waiting to watch a game seven tonight. Because yeah, man, there's Ugh. there's no there's no way that a Leafs fan could have confidence going into that. There's no, no way after losing two straight, right, having two more chances to clinch that would have pushed right this magic number everyone came up with was oh the Matthews Marner era we're zero and ten in clinching games. So you know what? For Saturday, I had taken I took uh-huh. my white my blank jersey out because for me. I was giving them a blank slate, right? Going into Saturday's game, nice. boys, you've won two in Tampa already. No, you know what? You haven't looked like the better team for the entirety of this series. No. That doesn't matter, man. That's not what playoff hockey is about. Boston, yeah. right? They didn't look like the better team in 2013 against the Leafs. Yet people love that team and how much they came back in the third, and they're such a great team for coming back. But the Leafs got lucky when they did it. right? No, screw that. You showed up when it did matter. You did get the pucks in the net like it mattered. And you won the damn series. And I'm, I couldn't be prouder. I was, you know, it, it was it was pride. I was like, you know what? People are, again, there's so many people from both sides, right? There's been 19 years of failure that we've got probably a one-to-one ratio of trolls versus actual league fans oh because there's God. so many of us. There's so many of them. And, yep. <laughs> and it's great fun. But as long as the people aren't taking it seriously, like you, you fans are celebrating like it's your cup. Yeah, it basically is. We've won a series for the first time since, like you said, a person could now drive, drink, maybe do those things separately. But, you know, a person could have been not alive last time we were here and now is legal to do lots of things now. 
right? Yeah, like, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Dude, like, I was nine years old. Yeah. I've got a seven-year-old stepson now, right? Like that kid is basically <laughs> me. The last time that I was watching this team play worthwhile hockey, it's you know, wild. and and it's it's a great moment. It's something to build off of. I think it's absolutely a monkey off the back for those guys, oh, right? Oh, they got to be feeling good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I hope to keep throwing car flags up on my car because I got four <laughs> of them up there so far for the four wins, and I yep. hope that we uh, we lose some gas mileage because I put so many flags in that <laughs> damn thing. You gotta get the sixteen, boy. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like they like I'm, and I've heard that too. You know, people like, oh yeah, you're acting like you want a cup already, blah blah blah. And it's like, you know what, man? Like, pardon my language, but the amount of shit that Leaf fans have gone through over the past however many years 19 but realistically you know the last few years have been really bad why we deserve it you know let us let us have our fun right like at the end of the day the real fans know yes we'll party all day long because we won the first round finally but we know and the leafs in particular the players know this is 25 percent of the way there let's get the rest of it leading into our next series who the leafs will be playing now, okay, I genuinely think that this is far greater of a, not surprise, but story for sure. Panthers beat Boston. I was baffled about this. Like, don't get me wrong, and I said it before, Florida is playing well. Did I expect Boston to lose after being up 3-1? Hell no. But the Panthers took that series. They bought I, all respects and props to Boston. They didn't lose that series. Florida took it without a question. They woke up and took it. Some play from Boston maybe wasn't great, but Florida capitalized. And that's the factor in my eyes. The fact that Florida capitalized, right? It was a lot of messes, messed up plays in a lot of series, but the other team didn't necessarily take advantage. Florida took advantage. Yes, it's a big deal because Boston is technically the best team ever <laughs> based on regular season stats and blah, 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 blah. They're the best regular season team of all time. No denying that. They have the numbers to prove it. To lose to the Panthers for them, it's not embarrassing. I don't think it's embarrassing. It sucks after what they just did during the regular season and the fact that they're up 3-1, but I don't think it's embarrassing. I was watching the game, and I saw within like two minutes, 50% of the Boston fans had left the arena. It's not an embarrassing thing. Florida is still a very good team and deserved that turnaround by far in my eyes they were the better team for the last three games and that's why they won alex what do you think you think they think the same yeah i mean a little bit but i'm i don't know i think you're giving the, the bruins a bit more you know cookies than they kind of deserve here um man where was that 65 win killer instinct for five six and seven you had that's patrice true. you had patrice bergeron not fly down to florida the boys go down there and win two straight to come back with a three to one series lead. He comes back for game five at home. And is everyone gripping their stick tight or something? Cause they're playing nervous. Cause Papa might be playing his last few games with the team this year. Like, I don't know what quite happened, man, but the, to me, it was like the killer instinct wasn't there Right, the power play still looked good. They were still, they were still passing it around. All right. But there, there just seemed to be some decisions made that, that leave you sort of wondering, right? I heard some things about Allmark that he wasn't quite right for that series. Why yeah. didn't you go to Swayman earlier, right? That earlier, that was basically yeah. like yeah, it wasn't a complete tandem all year, but it was pretty dang close, right? Their goal, their splits. So mm -hmm. if Allmark's not right in game three, four, five, whenever that popped up, why wasn't Swayman in there right away? Because man, Allmark didn't look great in those last couple games. There, there's definitely a couple goals. You're like, man, if he could have moved a little bit better, if if there was actually something going on, like maybe that does explain it, and maybe that's the difference. Right, you just had this record-breaking season, this benchmark-setting season, yeah. and you did the same thing Tampa did four years ago, and you you lost to a scrappy team. I don't think that there's a like 
That's what happens in the playoffs because we know that because we're Leafs fans, man. We've we've seen that for <laughs> we've seen that <laughs> forever, brutal. right? It's it's five six years straight. That we've seen a good team that might win, that could win, but lost to a scrappy team that whatever got the bounces, got this, got that, didn't find a way to get it done. And Boston. Mm-hmm. Not known to be like that, but they didn't find a way to get it done. And they had three good cracks at it. And you tell anybody this year that Boston's got three chances to close it against like nobody's nobody's betting the Panthers, right? No, no, but nobody is. And credit to them, they are not going to be an easy out for the Leafs. I do think it's a better matchup. It's I would have maybe liked the Slay the Dragon type take on Boston, but it's going to be a tough series, man, because I think Florida's playing some really damn good hockey. Yeah, th- this is the way I look at it. Yes, Leafs fans want to play Florida because they're the worst team. Well, they won, so they're not the worst team. Realistically, they're not. They won. Leafs fans also want to play Boston because they want that sweet vengeance <laughs> or the potential of it, of course. I want to play personally. I don't give a crap who we play, who the Leafs play. I want the best team. I don't want any asterisks beside any, I'm just saying, in this case, the Leafs. If the Leafs were to win the cup, I don't want any asterisks beside, oh, well, they walked their way to the, the, the final. Like, and this is a totally different sport, but in my opinion, the Toronto Raptors walked their way to the final, right? One tough series and faced a, walking dead team of golden state warriors but that's a conversation for another day but i don't want an asterisk beside any team for that matter obviously i want the leafs to win you know but i i that's not what i want to see i want the best possible matchups because that's what the playoffs is all about right and i have so many people like oh leave some four easy man five maximum mm Florida is no slouch of a team, especially if they play any way that they played against Boston in those last three games. That's, I, I, I don't think this is a walk in the park for the Leafs as much as it hates me to say I hate to say it, but I do not think this is going to be a walk in the park for the Leafs at all. I think Florida is not going to go down without a fight. Genuinely not going to go down. So, I don't know. And I want to put this to rest because I see it all over social media right now with this whole... Oh, the script is in with that graphic error. <laughs> like, like, there was a graphic error in the Panthers game where they put up goal and then, like, what, 10 seconds later or something or 20 seconds later, they scored. Have you worked in, in Gorilla or with uh, FX before? Mistakes are made. Shut the hell up. There's no blah, 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 blah. It, it, it was an error. Relax. <laughs> There's no script. None of that. Like, like, it, <laughs> enough <laughs> that's that's hilarious to me it's like whatever people they're all boston fans i'm sure blah, 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 blah. They're, they're, there's a script blah, blah 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 but it was a graphics error relax <laughs> i just have to put that to rest because that stuff is kind of hard to do one slip of the finger and you got goal on there oh but then oh they scored enough of that nonsense but uh so we'll move to the last Seven minutes of the Rangers and Devils game. Devils are still up 2-0. Oh, baby. I'm just going to go out and say it. I know there's the third period magic in these playoffs, but I think the Devils take it. 2 nothing, and I'm sure I'm, I don't got the game on or anything, but I'm sure the Devils are playing defensively as humanly possible right now to the point where they're not, <laughs> they're not going to let anything in or anything in their zone to the best of their abilities. I'm surprised. I very much am. Now, we're both wrong on that one, so we can both count that to red. I'm not going to do it, but that's a negative for both of us. But I'm surprised, but not surprised, right? I thought the experience would be the true factor for the Rangers. Turns out the Devils are pretty good. They, I already knew they were good, but they don't necessarily – they do have experience. Like, I, 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 act, I act like they're a team full of, you know, 18 to 20-year-olds. They're not. A lot of their players are still, you know, in good prime age, right? But they came out guns a blazing for the entire series. And, you know, I'm kind of happy they won. I really want to see them go on, especially to play Carolina. Ooh, that'll be so fun. So 
I, I like it. I do like it. And I like the potential. I mean, it's still potential watch. I'm going to look at my phone again and it's 2-2. Two, two. No, it's still 2 nothing. But, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, great series. All of them have been excellent. This one's been so fun because it's like crack runners facing off against each other. So fast, so fun. Love it. Alex, what do you think? Man, I've been just a little bit disappointed in what I've seen from the Rangers. Again, another team, I'm obviously, we both picked them to win, but I was I was expecting a bit more from them, right? I'm expecting a bit better consistent scoring from their their offense. They got some, they, they had some big deadline pickups, right? The big names in Kane, Tarasenko. Add that into the vets that you had in Zabina, Jad, Kreider. You know, like they, they got some good scorers there, and, and it really just hasn't been there in the totality of the series, right? Obviously, it's game seven now, so they're going to have gotten close. But close doesn't cut it, man. Those couple games, I mean, tonight and game, what was it, three and four? Or no, sorry, four and uh, four and five with Akira Schmid. When he stood on his head, he, like, he's, I don't want to say single handedly because clearly he can't score the goals as well. But as single handedly as a goalie can, has really been the shift of that series. Yep. And, and huge credit due, man. That's a guy that's playing USHO hockey like a year and a half ago, right. right? Like it's what a jump for him to be coming in to, to be stopping a team that went out and picked up, you know, $18 million worth of goal scoring in, in <laughs> two players, right? I mean, cap hits, whatever. Uh-huh. But it's it's been quite the performance he's put on. And, man, it's, it's you know, it's Cam Ward-esque. It's, yep. it, if this kid's got it, man, it's – that was sort of the piece to me that it was having me bet against the devils. And if he's, if he's filling that piece in, he is the sort of, you know, he is the answer. I am, I'm nervous about what they can do. Cause I really like them against Carolina, right? right. If that's the, that's the matchup that we're going to see here. I, again, I just, I think that their offense now is on par with it based on Carolina's injuries, right? And their defense has got to be pretty equal. It'll be funny with Dougie Hamilton having just recently switched teams, right? right? Yeah. And, and and then, man, it's, it to me, it's goaltending is going to be a complete kind of wild card because yep. I don't think anyone can truly predict it. We, you know, if Akira Schmid keeps this up, amazing, <laughs> but we also did see him falter in one game. And, and who did the Carolina Hurricanes start in that series? We, we probably don't know at this point. I, I think Freddie, but... I don't think that that's a lock. So yeah, that's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a, a tough one, man. Yeah, you would think if if Freddie's healthy, he would be the guy. But again, you don't really know, man. That's uh oh, it's three nothing. Devils are taking it. That's okay. uh, three minutes, uh, uh, three nothing with five and a half minutes left. Devils are moving on. We'll so, crown, the, crown the champion. Yeah, we'll move on as well to our uh, little game that Alex uh, thought about our prediction game. Well, actually, first. Our prediction scores. Great minds think alike, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, we tied. Yeah. Three, three tie. Let's go. Now, next round, we'll see. Might be a little different. But Alex has a little game. We're calling it Call Your Shot. Um, Alex, do you want to explain how this how this works? Yeah. So I just wanted to do a quick little, you know, I'm going to pick first this round. Next week, we'll let you pick first in, in whatever we sort of come up with. But we're just going to, like the segment is called here, Call Our Shot. I'm going to pick a series that I think I know the winner of first. Ben, you'll get to take the other team. If you wouldn't mind editing that there for me to put in Seattle instead of Minnesota, because that was my handiwork earlier. Oh, that's okay. That's I was okay. able to add an I was able to add a note in. I don't know quite how man, technology and stuff. It's, <laughs> it's so difficult, man. I'm so thank, I'm so thankful I'm doing this podcast with you, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're a big help for that side well. of it. So, so the oh, there, and cause... now yeah. So basically, at this point, watch, I they're, get, gonna, they're gonna lose. Watch it happen. Uh, we're gonna no, we're gonna get this done, and then the Rangers are gonna win. <laughs> that will be we posted anyways. Posted yeah, exactly. anyways. <laughs> but no, so I'm I'm looking at the four matchups here, and I'm gonna take my pick as to which one I'm the most confident in. And I don't want to be too much of a homer, but man, I can't let you take the Leafs against me. Oh. And honestly, <laughs> honestly, all the other ones to me, I think are just tougher to pick, and I do feel more confident about Toronto being the better team in that series and, and, and really taking it. So now Ben, you would get to pick your choice of two series as well. Basically like a little snake draft. So you'll get to take yours and circle back. Okay. I got the next one. Okay. Okay. Um, Hmm. That's a bit of a tough one. I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb here. I'm going to take Seattle. Oh, Okay. All right. That's what I'm doing. I, I, I think that I love both of these teams. And it's Locker Token Ambassador Vince Dunn versus Locker Token Ambassador Tyler Sagan. It's going to be fun. So I'm really rooting for both teams, of course. 
I'm just on this Seattle train. And I think that them getting that first round win against Colorado is going to just shoot them all the way. Now, do I think they're going to win the, the next round? Maybe. The round after that, the tougher competition. Still, I think that they're going to be fueled, fueled by this, let's get her done, you know, let's go. So I'm taking the, I'm taking the wild card here with Seattle. All right, and so who else you, you get to pick another matchup as well? And take Order team, right? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Mm, making it harder on me. Um, both of these could go either way, that's the tough part. Both of them can go truly either way, but I'm going Edmonton. Mm, I think it's time yeah. for I think it's time that McDavid wants to get it done, and uh, he's gonna go out there and score as many goals as needed against uh, a very tough. Vegas team. Oh, I'm so excited for that matchup. It's going to be so good. All right, Alex, who do you want? Carolina or, or New Jersey? All right. So I agree with you. Four minutes and 20 seconds left. There's there's no way the Rangers are coming back. That's a devil's win. Devils yep. are moving on. And I'm going to go with them, man. I'm, I'm going to ride this Akira Schmid. I've got a, I've got a Cam Ward signed stick and a photo somewhere. He's kind of hey. somebody that, as I was being a, a goalie in my young hockey career, I, I saw that run and kind of looked up to him a little bit. And so I'm getting I'm getting those vibes. I can't shake <laughs> it. And you know what? If if I'm right with Devils Toronto, it's it's making me a little nervous because I can't shake this kind of good feeling I have about the Devils. And and if they're playing the Leafs, I don't want feelings about them. And how crazy <laughs> how crazy would it be? That if the Devils and the Leafs did play in the finals, you know, the old good old hockey game song. In the song, they say the, the Stanley Cup finals, even though it can't happen, the Stanley Cup finals, but the Eastern Conference finals, the New Jersey Devils, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Boom. <laughs> Called it from however long ago. <laughs> well, but that would be, oh my God, that'd be such a good series. I hope, I hope that that does happen. That'd be, that'd be so fun. I would love that. Well, We'll uh, we'll wrap it up now with our we'll finish up with the call your shot. We'll come back in uh, the next episode and see who is right. Kind of once once the series are done, we'll we'll have our little tally. My guess is it's going to be a tie again because you know we're both so good. Come on, what are you going to do? But thank you everybody for listening. Great episode. We'll be back with another one.